So you said, tell me in five minutes or less what the preacher said. So today the preacher took his text from Isaiah chapter 38, verse 14. He says, like a crane or a swallow, I chattered, I mourned like a dove. My eyes fail from looking upward. Oh Lord, I am oppressed, undertake for me. Oh Lord, I am oppressed, undertake for me. He says, when someone is oppressed, it looks like they don't have common sense. When someone is oppressed, when you are oppressed, it looks like you don't have common sense. The very little things that one would expect that you are able to do, that everybody would take for granted, this person who is oppressed isn't usually able to do that. So what does it mean to ask God to undertake for us? When we say God undertake for me, what does it mean? It means to assume responsibility on your behalf. It means to ask God to take control of that situation on your behalf. Yes, there are many things that God has given you and I the responsibility over, the responsibility to, to control. But there are many other things where we don't have responsibility for, where it is only God that can change those situations. There are many things that God expects you and I to take care of, and He will not interfere in those things. But there are many other things that God, only God, can influence or change on our behalf. So when do we ask God to undertake for us? He said, well, we ask God to undertake for us when we are at our wit's end. When we are at our wit's end, when you've tried everything, when you've tried all your connections, when you've made all the calls to the right people that you know to call, when you've prayed, when you've sang, when you've done everything you know to do and nothing seems to be changing, you ask God to undertake for you. When the situation is overwhelming and burdensome, when you don't know which way to turn, when you are confused, when there's a fog over your decisions, you ask God to undertake for you. When you, when you want God to undo the situation for you, the Bible says, Come unto me, all ye who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. When you are faced with those burdensome and wearying situations, you ask God to undertake for you. So what happens? What can you expect to happen when God under, undertakes for you? When God answers this prayer of undertaking for you, what can you expect to happen? The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. The thoughts that he thinks towards you, they are thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. So when you ask God to undertake for you and he answers that prayer, what are some things that you can expect to happen? Number one, he said, the preacher said, he makes your past a history for tomorrow's testimony. The past that you were ashamed of before, he makes it, he packages it into something that becomes a reference when you are giving your testimony of your victories tomorrow. He changes your level and your position. He removes every obstacle on your way. When God undertakes for you, when God undertakes for you, when God steps in into that situation, that hopeless situation, when God undertakes for you, he removes every obstacle. He levels all the mountains and builders and their builders. He confronts your stubborn Goliath. He gives you direction. That fog of covering over your face, it clears it away and you have clarity and direction. It makes you great and increases your greatness. Psalm 71 verse 21. It makes you great and increases your greatness. And it heals you. It heals your medically written off diseases. It takes away your shame and your reproach and it empowers you to become what he ordained you to be. When God undertakes for you, he makes everything work together for your own good. It makes all work together for your own good. I'm praying for you today that God will undertake for you this week in the name of Jesus. I hope that blesses you. Thank you for listening and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.